Hello, this is Dawn with the Yoss Design Studio. Today I'm going to show you how to make a simple stretch bracelet and using a technique to hide your knot inside the bead. These are some of the bracelets that I've recently made for myself and this is actually a bracelet I've had for well over a year and it's uh, really stayed in shape and the knot uh, hasn't given and the bracelet hasn't stretched apart yet and I'll give you some tips on how to make that work. So the first thing I'm going to do is talk a little bit about the products that I use when I'm making stretch bracelets. Um, first of all, I always use an elastic cording that is um, as thick it can, as it can possibly be to go through, the thickest possible um, cording. So I often will use a one millimeter, but I have a different technique in which I hide the knot using a thinner cord that's doubled over. So Stretch Magic has long been a product that I've used and, and I like. They they make uh, not only clear, they make black, and they make this cool opalescent um, cording that has a little bit of texture and I find it holds a knot better. Uh, this is a round cording, however, this is my new favorite cording, the opalon cording, which has, um, it's actually a flat cording, it's kind of hard to tell here, but it is not round, it's flat, and that really seems to hold the knot. Uh, and again, I like the fact that it is a textured uh, cord and it's not uh, really slippery. So, to start, what I'm going to do is I'm going to take my beads out, and I'm going to take, uh, I work right off of my cord so that I don't waste too much, um, but I'm going to take my cording, I'm going to double it over um, to a length, I don't know, maybe it's uh, a foot long or so. And I'm going to make myself a needle using thin gauge wire. So this is 26 gauge copper wire. I will often use 28 gauge, which is even thinner and um, doesn't, you know, will fit through more holes, but you're just going to take a cutting wire like that. I use my little round nose plier pull the ends together, and then I'm going to trim the needle so it looks like kind of like a bobby pin. And I'm going to take that needle and go through my cording. So the first bead I go through, it's got, I'm going to have to tug on it a bit in order to flatten the head of the needle. Uh, so uh, I try and start with the, the bead that I have that has the biggest hole. These are halite beads, they're pretty consistent. I am going to use this little focal bead, but I don't like to hide the knot in the focal bead because if it pops out, I don't want it to be right on top. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to string these beads on. See how it, it kind of pulls there? I'm just going to use my pliers and pull. And usually after you've pulled one on, whoop, I shouldn't have said that so fast. It's easier to get the rest on. But now we're just going to string these on. And I'm going to pause the video in a, for a minute while I continue to string all mine on. Okay, so I'm back again and I've just about, just about gotten all my beads on. I did notice when I was stringing that one of my beads seemed to have a slightly larger hole than the rest. So if I find one of those, I always save them to the end and put it on as my last bead. I'm going to put my last bead on. I've made my bracelet seven and a half inches, uh, which is usually too big for most people. They um, Most stretch bracelets are closer to a seven inch, but I don't like anything really tight on my wrist. I'd rather that it be loose. Uh, one thing I didn't mention at the beginning is that if you're worried about your beads sliding off the end here, you can always use one of these bead stoppers and then you're not going to lose your beads if you pull too hard. All right, so I don't need that bead stopper anymore. What I'm going to do is I'm going to now chase my beads towards the um, needle, but I want to have a little, a little bit of that loop there showing. So let's pull, pull too hard. Let's pull a little bit out. So I have a little bit of that loop showing. What I'm going to do is now I'm going to cut my cording as such. I'm going to take one piece of uh, one side of the elastic cording and I'm going to thread it through that loop. Doesn't want to go, but 
Maybe I've just had a little too much caffeine this morning. There we are. Okay, so I've threaded through the loop and now I can discard my needle. And that's a great thing about making your own needle, needle is that you're not wasting needles. You can just kind of pull it out and you can actually reuse that. And what you're going to do is pull and chase that little loop into uh, the strand. And then we're going to tie these two cords together. So just kind of, kind of push them down together like that. And when I start to do my overhand knots, uh, the cord will chase further in. So start by doing just a simple overhand knot. I'm going to pull it tight. I always take uh, my cord and stretch the inside, which helps to pull it tighter. Okay. And now I'm going to do two double. I'm going to go through the loop twice and do two knots. So this is one. And then I'm going to do one more. One, two. There we are. All right, so my knot is already chasing inside of my uh, hole, as you can see there. Now, lots of people say that when you do this method, you do not need to put glue on it. I don't believe it. I put glue on everything. So I'm going to take my glue and glue my knot first. Uh, I use uh, GS Hypo Cement when I do it because I love that fine little applicator tip. You can get into tight spaces. And I'm going to pull the knot out and I'm going to apply a little bit of glue. Don't need a lot because the texture of this cording is going to help keep the knot in place as is the fact that I have done um, two overhand knots and doubled it. Hardest part about using this glue is putting the, the tip back on and you really do have to put it on right after you use it so that it doesn't dry up. But I don't want to, there, I got it on, okay. All right, so now I let it dry for a minute or so, and then I snip uh, right there. And just because I'm superstitious, I put a little bit more glue right on that tip before pulling it in. I'm not going to waste your time by showing you that, but now I can just push my bead right over that knot, let it dry, and it has disappeared. So if you found this tutorial helpful, please be sure to hit the like button below. If you subscribe to our channel, you get notification when we post new training t t uh, tutorials. We should be doing two new tutorials a week uh, throughout the summer. And if you need to find any of the products that I've used here today, you can visit us at eosdesignstudio.com. There's a link below as well. And you can find the cording, the, the glue, and uh, perhaps the beads if we still have them in stock. Thank you.